Hi guys. Uh, this will be a little short video. This is a requested video. Um, what we're going to talk about is when you do alignment on uh, a lot of radios and, and some TVs and stuff, they'll talk about a dummy antenna when you're co connecting your generator up. As you can see here, it says use dummy antenna in series with the output of test oscillator consisting of, and it says a .02 microfarad condenser, and it tells you where to hook it and what you'd be hooking up and adjusting. Um, if you follow that on down, uh, this is for the 455KCIF. Uh, then when we get into the oscillator and antenna adjustments, they continue with the same connection point, or uh, they continue with a, a dummy antenna condenser, but since we're in higher frequency, we're running at 250 picofarad. That's what the point zero 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 two five microfarad is, 250 picofarad. In this case, they're wanting you to hook it then at the antenna uh, lead coming from the loop antenna. There's a green-white wire. They also tell to use a 0.02 blocking capacitor and all three of these on the uh, low side of your generator to the to the frame of the condenser through a 0.02 and here it was on the chassis alright so what's the dummy antenna for um, well basically it's actually there for two reasons one it will uh, be set up between the impedance of your input that you're inputting in in this case here a tube but in the same actual thing uh, all three of these are actually will be directly or indirectly feeding into the uh, control grid or signal grid on the mixer tube but that impedance coupled with this capacitor makes a um, filter that's number one reason for it. It'll uh, pass higher frequencies, in this case 455 KC or higher and 1650 and 1400. Um, it's a high pass filter. The second reason for them is to block. They're acting as a blocking. And the purpose of that is, is twofold. Depending on your generator and depending on how it's wired and, and designed, um, there could be some DC bias voltage that comes out of that generator. And you don't want that affecting the radio when you're doing the alignment. So you want to block that. The other thing is, too, most of the time you are inputting into a grid. Uh, that grid is biased on that tube and so it has a certain amount of bias voltage there and you don't want that uh, interfering or coming back or being loaded down by the generator um, to throw off that bias and throw off the amplifier and cause distortion um, in your radio when you're doing your alignment or TV so the two main reasons is for filtering, uh, high pass filter, as well as blocking any DC, whether it's coming from the generator or feeding back from the radio or TV. So that's that's the only reason for them. Um, now, in some circumstances, they may call for a resistor in there with this. Um, that's just more for, uh, depending on how it's hooked up, it may be a termination thing, and we're going to get in that in a minute, or it may be uh, in there for added um, RC filter time constant that they want. But most of the time, you're just going to see a capacitor as a dummy antenna. Now, on some TVs, they won't list this. 
because on some TVs they have you feed into the mixer through a tube shield that's ungrounded. Uh, if it's got the shield on there where you can unmount the shield, like older TVs had, they'd have you just unmount the shield, lift it up a little bit, and then you hook a generator to it. By lifting it up a little bit, it's not grounded anymore. But that is actually doing the same thing as this. That's a capacitive coupling between the shield and the plate in that tube. So you, you've got two conductors. The shield is one. The internal plate in the tube is the second one. And insulation, which is the glass of the tube. So it's a capacitor. So I, uh, I, I, there's not much else to say about that. That's why I say this is probably a low, uh, um, not a very long video. The other thing I want to talk about is, and the other question was, is, and I assume this is what he's talking about, is um, a resistor that may be in the leads, uh, or you might have watched somebody else's video doing alignment. You may see them have an actual attached resistor that's across the um, the low side and high side of the uh, lead that's coming out. Uh, basically, I, was, I had the whiteboard out here, but I don't think I have to draw anything. Uh, what it is is it's a termination. Every generator you got or you ever find has a certain impedance on its output. Uh, most of them are like 50 ohms but there are some 75 ohms as well. Uh, that's why it's really kind of important especially if you got to make up your own leads which is something quite common because if you buy um, whether it's a RF generator or signal generator or a sweep generator or whatever off of eBay most of the time you don't get leads um, once in a while you get lucky and they'll have all the leads but uh, just in case it don't but you want to be able to find out for sure what your generator uh, termination is what what its uh, impedance is uh, basically say you've got a 50 ohm output on your generator then you feed that into a wire, a lead, a coax that has a couple alligator ends at the end um, that you're going to attach to, you know, your your radio or TV. If they're unterminated, in other words, they're they're just open. There's nothing there. Then what happens is you can start getting. Uh, harmonics coming down that wire coming from the generator because it's not being loaded uh, there's also some standing waves that can build up in the cable itself and cause this you can get sporadic noises uh, spikes uh, several different other issues that can um, creep up if you terminate it though properly and what proper means is as close to the output as possible so if you got a 50 ohm generator then you want to terminate with say <coughs> 50 ohms would be best but either 47 ohm resistor or 51 ohm and what I mean terminate is uh, basically across your leads um, Let's say this is your leads right here that come out of your cable. You want to run resistor across here. Say like you know 47 ohms or 51, excuse me. <coughs> resistor, either one. 51 probably closer. You know, it's definitely closer to 50 than 47, but either one will work. If they actually come with the lead, now my leader L, uh, LSW333, which I showed a video on a while back, came with leads. And uh, I'll show them to you, but first I'll show you what's inside the uh, RF probe lead. 
And this is it right here. There's a little box at the end, and I'll show you that in a minute with a switch. Um, it has two outputs. What the switch does is take it either uh, terminated or unterminated. Uh, most of the time you'd run it terminated, so you leave the switch on. Right now it's showing an off position. <coughs> so the red and black is 75 ohm unbalanced. And then the yellow and white leads, if you use those two, are 300 ohm balanced. So this has actually got a built-in Balin built into it. Uh, the 75 ohms, generally you'd use that for like feeding into a tube, like I talked about where you got lift the shield like they tell you, or hook it to a capacitor or to um, the, the grid or something, depending on what your instructions say to do. But that, that would be doing like your IF and stuff. When it comes to doing the RF or the tuner, on a TV or FM radio, which this thing also does. Um, like on TVs, the antenna uh, leads connections where you hook the antenna to is 300 ohms. So then you'd use the yellow and white for that. Again, with the switch on. And if you notice <coughs> what this does, the uh, red and black, if you follow it back, of course it goes out to the signal. And then the box itself is connected via the ground that goes on back right here. This is showing a kind of schematic diagram of a coax. But the red goes back through the signal, but it also feeds back through the switch to a 75 ohm that's across the ground, which is also hooked to the black. So there's your 75 ohms. This always stays in here with 300 or 75. Because the generator's output is 75, so we want to keep the generator seeing that 75 ohms termination. When we connect to 300 ohms, then we've got a couple caps. There's also another cap in here acting as a blocking cap. But we've got a couple caps, 150 and 113 ohms, that will work with the 75 to get us the 300 ohms, along with the capacitors feeding into this. So that we have a 300 ohm. The caps keep it balanced, and then it feeds in and comes back and goes out to the signal over the 75 ohm termination. And um, basically, this is it right here. So here's your leads there, and the switch open or non terminated. And terminated so but you always want to uh, <clears throat> if you don't have any lead again look up try to find information on your generator and when you make up a lead for it and and then at the end um, you just rig you up a, a you know some resistor soldered in. Um, I've got some here or I've got you know like a lead here. I've got some that are this is off my audio generator so I don't get too concerned about it being terminated but I've got some like this cable where I've actually down here I put a little resistor right down in this part here and then heat shrinked it so it's not up here bothering anything but you just hook a um, you know, whatever your generator needs, 75 or 50 ohms, hook it between here and here, and that's your termination. And that allows it to load the generator down, it keeps it stable at whatever frequency you set it on, at whatever level you set it on. It keeps any harmonics out, any distortions out, any noise out. So that's why you do that. And as far as the capacitor, that's just in there for blocking. Even though this lead actually has a capacitor, and some of them do, you still follow the radio instructions or the TV instructions if it calls for a dummy antenna or cap being put in series. Um, for one thing, you may not know what the if this is any good or leaky or not. 
But the other thing is too, the cap's actually working with the tube and making a filter right there. So you want that filter um, that the manufacturer or the engineers had designed when doing the alignment. So always use whatever your instructions say. And you know, they'll they'll vary. Uh, it's always a good idea to always find alignment instructions for whatever you're working on. If nothing else, you need to know numbers. You need to know what the IF frequency is. Um, you know, especially 30s radios, it jumped all over the place. So down in the bottom, around 160 kilocycles, all the way up to over 460, 475. So, and anywhere in between, they were jumping everywhere every manufacturer was. But it's also nice to have the instructions because um, sometimes they have different ways where they want you to connect the generator in um, and on different instructions about doing the IF. Some want you to do the last IF by feeding the signal into the IF tube, amplifier tube's grid. And then when you get to the first IF, feed it into the mixer. Uh, others just feeding in the mixer to do both IFs is fine. And then as far as your RF adjustments, you know, the, the oscillator adjustment, um, antenna adjustment and stuff, they may have different frequencies. Not everybody's got the same frequencies they want you to run on when doing those adjustments. So always, it's always best to find your instructions for your radio. Uh, or TV. TVs are even worse. They're all over the board uh, with various different things that they want you to do and set up and everything else. So anyway, I hope this answers the question. It's really not a, comp a complicated thing. It's just there for filtering and blocking is the capacitor. That's what the dummy antenna is for. And as far as uh, resistors uh, across the leads, it's just termination uh, impedance termination and matching to the generator and that information um, you'll have to just look up for your generator if you didn't get a, a manual with it when you uh, bought it uh, to uh, find out exactly because a lot of times it, it's not even marked on the front or anything so it'll be in the manual so anyway <coughs> That'll be about it for this video. If it uh, gave you some good information or you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. And, <coughs> excuse me, and stuff. Uh, I'm uh, getting over a flu, so still a little patchy and a little coffee, but we're about over it. Anyway, uh, I've got another video coming up. I'll probably do to, uh, today and get it also up with this one hopefully uh, on some other stuff I got so i uh, got another radio and uh, some other uh, something else too to show you so anyway um, you guys have a a good weekend um, if I don't get back to you in another video before then uh, otherwise thanks for watching thanks for your comments and thanks to my new subscribers, and I'll see you on the next video.